Hello and welcome. I am excited today because today we're doing something a little different. Today we are reversing roles and the interviewer is going to be interviewed. I'm Dr. Jeannie Michelle and just in just a moment I am going to invite Dr. Erica Goodstone to talk about what she does. She's been leading this webinar for a while now and now it's our turn to find out a little bit more about her and her topic today is healing touch. Dr. Erica? Thank you. Touch is a basic human need. Our sense of self, ability to love, attractiveness to others, and our health and well-being can be enhanced or diminished by the quality of touch we receive throughout our lifetime. Mm -hmm. Babies who do not receive adequate touch and sensual stimulation do not grow and thrive. Adults who have been physically abused many years mm -hmm. earlier are more likely to have chronic and life-threatening illnesses later in life. Touch is essential for all of us, and yet it has become almost a taboo subject. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Healing Recovery Retreat. I'm your host, Dr. Erica Goodstone. My goal for this virtual retreat is to help you, no matter what you are seeking to recover from, by introducing you to thought leaders and practitioners, program directors, authors, interventionists, and healers, men and women who are living proof that the recovery process works in the right environment with caring and skilled help and lots and lots of support. And today, I am really grateful to you, Dr. Jean Michelle, for interviewing me about this topic that I really want people in the recovery field and people who are going through recovery to get a glimpse into the understanding of what touch is all about and why it's so important. Thank you, Dr. Erica. I am really interested in what you have to say, because like you said, in the world today, we are really, what I would say, we're a touch starved. And you know, could, should teachers hug students? There's so much loaded in touch. How did you become interested in an expert in touch? What drew you to this field as a, as a mode for healing? That's a great question. It really started, as far as I can remember, when I was teaching health and physical education in the mm -hmm. high school and then at the college level. And I was always taking workshops and trainings in mm -hmm. archery, fencing, horseback riding, dancing, mm -hmm. exercise, always doing too much and having injuries, minor injuries, nothing that was really serious, pulled muscles. And... I was always seeking to receive some kind of relief from it. So I had massage therapy, Traeger, craniosacral, polarity therapy, reflexology, neuromuscular therapy, and on and on. And then right before my orals for my dissertation for my PhD, mm -hmm. I went to the Association for Humanistic Psychology, a weekend conference where I saw my future mentor and teacher, Alana Rubenfeld. She had somebody lying on a massage table just with their shoes off and a room full of us observing and part of the event. And this person had issues in her life that she had been talking about and she had pneumonia so alana asked her questions like who is sitting on your chest mm -hmm. and the person had never thought of that before mm -hmm. but then she started to say with the prodding of the type of body work and counseling that alana does and the person started to say, get off my chest. And as she said that, she said it to her mother, her husband, mm -hmm. whoever else she felt that toward. Mm -hmm. And she started coughing. And it became obvious that the ailment that she was having was really directly or indirectly related to the issues happening in her life at the time. Like it wasn't her shoulder hurting or her back hurting. Mm -hmm. It was in the chest area because she felt they were suppressing her she couldn't breathe and so that put the work together for me I had done a lot of work with counseling I've studied it and I had background in that and I had a lot of receiving of all kinds of body therapy and I had even trained in some and when I saw that put together I said that does it and I've worked with this ever since mm -hmm. then 
in 1996, Alana asked me to represent Rubenfeld Synergy. Mm -hmm. I was on the first steering committee and a board. It started in Salem, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. where we brought together leading practitioners of body therapy, somatic therapies at the time. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as much as now, and it wasn't mm -hmm. as well documented. But we brought these people together and started an organization, the U.S. Association mm -hmm. for Body Psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. This was 1996, and I thought that by now, everyone would be knowing about this. Mm -hmm. And what I'm finding is that they know less about it now than they did 10 or 20 years ago. There was a big movement for touch and touch therapy and the body psychotherapy, and it's kind of gotten lost mm -hmm. with the evidence-based therapy and things have to be quick, and, and the body therapy mm -hmm. does something that you can't explain always. It's an energetic connection, mm -hmm. and when someone feels that energetic connection, mm -hmm. they heal from whatever is going on, or they wow. start to heal. Wow, that is fascinating. And I really hear your passion in this work. And when I go back to the example that you just offered, it sounded like in that example, and correct me if I'm wrong, Erica, it wasn't about the touch that someone was receiving. In that one, it was about something they had in their body that they were that was being lifted off them. Is there a difference in that type of psychotherapy or body therapy and then touch therapy or is it all part of the same genre? Wow, that is really a wonderful question that so much has to do with the quality of touch that we receive. So I would talk about this a little bit, some of the aspects or tips about touch mm -hmm. that I really wanted to talk about some of the facts, and I'll get to that later, but mm -hmm. I think it's good to start with this. First thing is that we have an energy field. We have a galvanic skin response, and <laughs> you and I just <laughs> discovered that in this interview. We, we, we were setting up, and she was wearing a sleeveless top, and the microphone was touching her skin. And so what happened is there was this strange sound that I've heard many times when a microphone doesn't work well, too mm -hmm. much interference. And we both suddenly realized that it had to do with the skin, the mm -hmm. skin response, the microphone picks it up. Mm -hmm. But we don't always realize that it exists. But mm -hmm. if you're sitting in a subway or a bus or some place where someone is too close that you don't want to be close to, you know there's an energy and you feel that tension. Mm -hmm. so, so one of the things about touch is that there's an energy field and we mm -hmm. often go right through the energy field. So for someone dealing with an addiction and in the recovery process, mm -hmm. even though massage is wonderful, when you're in a good state of mind and your muscles are tight and you want to be touched. Mm -hmm. Someone who has an issue that may have been abused or may mm -hmm. have a problem, they, if they get approached so quickly, it's not reaching mm -hmm. the deep level. And they may even resist and not want it because mm -hmm. if they were touched in some abusive way, they're going to resist their body. Mm -hmm. It's held in the body. Yeah. So I could go on with this, but... Well, so, so what I'm hearing also is in that moment you just described is that could somebody wanting to offer something healing could also trigger trauma potentially because that person in the past touch has not been healthy, touch has been traumatic. Is, is that true as well? So a practitioner Absolutely. needs to be, take care with how they you know, implement the process. I had an experience of that early on mm -hmm. where someone came to me who was trained in Rubenfeld Synergy, my, mm -hmm. main, my main method. She was still a student, mm -hmm. but she was expecting Rubenfeld Synergy the, the way it's taught. And I was mm -hmm. trained in a lot of different techniques, and one of them was Traeger. I haven't gotten certified in everything, mm -hmm. but I've used the movements. So she was expecting just to be held gently, and mm -hmm. I was rolling her head and rocking just a little bit it's gentle mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. she felt abused mm -hmm. it became a huge issue to her because of whatever her issues were and I learned mm -hmm. very quickly mm -hmm. 
not to jump in and do that, but to respect the person. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what I know about the research is mm -hmm. that the, the, I was fascinated when I found this little piece mm -hmm. of information. And I'm not a scientist, and hopefully mm -hmm. I'm saying it right. <laughs> There were scientists identified 18 genes that are needed for the development and function of a single type of sensory neuron, the touch receptor neuron for gentle touch mm -hmm. in the C. elegans touch receptor neurons. Mm -hmm. So this gene for gentle touch can only be turned on through gentle touch. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to talk a little more about you know, what is going on in our body and why that gentle touch could be so powerful. Well, Erica, this, this is so fascinating for me. And I also know that you are a, a certified sex therapist as well. So I'm wondering how this need for gentle touch shows up in couples. Is there anything that you have that you could share with us on that? Wow, absolutely. <laughs> and I wasn't expecting that question, but that's perfect. That the first thing I said is that we have an energy field. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that very often the man, but it's, it can be the woman too, mm -hmm. goes right past the energy field. Like a woman is at the sink doing dishes or something, he's grabbing her boobs or grabbing mm -hmm. her crotch or whatever, and, or slapping her. You know, all of that is just going right into the energy field. Which is fine if you've already gotten close, but if you're mm -hmm. not in that state of mind, it can really be irritating. And intrusive, it sounds like. And intrusive. Another mm -hmm. thing that people do, so the first thing is to honor the energy field, mm -hmm. which that works for two people. Another mm -hmm. thing that people do, I have several of these, so I'll go through them. Another mm -hmm. thing is that they rub. If you're rubbing a body mm -hmm. part, like you're holding mm -hmm. someone and you're rubbing Mm -hmm. the breast or their arm or anything, it doesn't necessarily feel good because you're doing something or mm -hmm. you're touching in order to get something. Mm -hmm. Like you're touching because you're doing this in order to have intercourse mm -hmm. rather than touching mm -hmm. just for the sensation, mm -hmm. just to explore and see how the other person mm -hmm. feels mm -hmm. and to also notice how you're touching. If you're touching mm -hmm. with tension in your fingers, mm -hmm. I once had somebody do a very gentle craniosacral session with me, just holding mm -hmm. the position. My mm -hmm. head was hurting for like hours later because oh. he had tension coming out of his fingers oh. and I felt oh. it in my temples. So we have a lot of this stuff going on and we have no idea that that's going on. Mm -hmm. So the other part is for you to be relaxed when you approach a partner mm -hmm. and for both of you to feel that it's okay the way the person is touching you. So you have to find out mm -hmm. and not get all defensive about that. Mm -hmm. And so the quality of touch is essential. If it's mm -hmm. too hard, if it's too soft, even getting a massage. I've had a massage mm -hmm. where it was mm -hmm. too soft. Mm -hmm. Like just tickly on the surface, it's not getting mm -hmm. in there because mm -hmm. the therapist has to really be like one with your tissue. Oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. And it's so interesting because what I'm getting to is there is a communication flow that shows up in how we touch and are touched. And probably the biggest thing I would I imagine is that in couples, we don't always talk about that. And we're not always aware of it. So thank you for sharing that piece too. And what I also, one more thing that I'm hearing, and correct me if I'm wrong or if I got this wrong, it you talked about the galvanized field. So there's a field that actually of energy around us that can people can intrude upon even before they actually physically touch us. Is that accurate? Absolutely. In one of my polarity therapy trainings, mm -hmm. we were testing how far away could you feel the energy. Ah, okay. And someone was all the way at the other end of the room and I could feel it. Wow. So it depends, you know, uh -huh. and just think about it. If someone was abusing you. You could mm -hmm. feel it before they even yeah. enter the room. Uh -huh. And are some of us more sensitive to than others, generally well, speaking? Well, this is the thing about the uh, touch receptor neuron. Okay. One of these genes, there were 18 genes. Mm -hmm. This is the MEC3 
gene, I guess, mm -hmm. or gene receptor. It encodes a transcription factor that controls touch receptor differentiation. So someone who has not received gentle touch and does not have this gene activated may not be able to differentiate between the gentle touch and the more painful touch and maybe they need a lot of touch maybe that's why the abuse like mm -hmm. for s and m type of thing maybe that's why the abuse of touch mm -hmm. feels good because they don't have that sensitivity and they need a lot of stimulation just to feel something interesting so can that gene that was not turned on based on early experience can it be turned on later in life with a touch recovery or how do you recover from this well, that's a wonderful question, and that's why receiving gentle touch mm -hmm. and with somebody understanding that, if mm -hmm. someone's been abused, the worst thing you want to do is go after them and intrude on their field. That's just more of the same. Mm -hmm. So the partner has to be really understanding mm -hmm. to stay back and allow that person to say touch me or don't touch me mm -hmm. you know to really let it happen but i really right. want to get into some of the facts about touch. okay you go <laughs> but you know we all know that the brain um the cerebral cortex mm -hmm. you know handles so much of our thoughts and our attention and we know that the limbic system re retains the uh, the emotion or stores it there from mm -hmm. traumatic experiences and other experiences and what we don't talk about i hardly ever hear anyone talking about this is the second brain it's been called the second brain or the enter enteric nervous system the gut mm -hmm. oh okay and the reason so that's why i love quoting all these facts that i've mm -hmm. gathered mm -hmm. We have more than 500 million neurons, one two hundredth of the number of neurons in our brain, in our gut. And wow. the gut also contains five times as many neurons as we have 100 million neurons in our spine. We have 500 million in the gut. So we have more neurons in the gut, and mm -hmm. there's this vagus nerve that goes all the way up to the brain. Mm -hmm. So whatever's going on in our gut is affecting everything. So another piece of this that's amazing is that we have more than 30 neurotransmitters in the gut, including the stress hormone acetylcholine. And the gut has, this is the important part, mm -hmm. I think, for addictions, is mm -hmm. that the gut has 90 to 95% of the body's feel-good hormone, serotonin. Oh. So 90 to 95%. So mm -hmm. you can understand that if someone has not dealt with their emotional issues, mm -hmm. because in terms of chakras, this is the emotional area, mm -hmm. that if we haven't dealt with that, this is the serotonin gets depleted and, and taking a substance or eating some foods mm -hmm. and suppress the feeling and make us feel a little better temporarily. The other thing that we have 50% of the dopamine, which is the excitement and novelty hormone mm -hmm. in the gut. So if we have our gut flowing freely, mm -hmm. relaxed and open and the energy flowing to our brain and reaching the limbic system, we would not have as much need or craving for these other things. But the touch really needs to be gentle, caring touch. I've also learned sometimes the deep tissue touch is helpful because that can trigger opening up. But the real entrance into the deeper part of us is through gentle touch. And in a moment, I'll talk a little more about that too. I'm, I'm fascinated. So I'm hearing that what we ingest impacts our gut and that also how we are touched and how we process emotions also impacts our gut and vice versa. It's kind of like there's this flow back and forth. Is that right? Well, my perspective is that our body is a hologram. Everything affects everything. Mm -hmm. So just think about it. If you're really upset about something mm -hmm. 
and someone you don't like, someone you're angry at, touches mm -hmm. you. It doesn't feel good, and your whole mm -hmm. body tightens. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if you're really upset, and mm -hmm. someone you trust and mm -hmm. feel safe with touches mm -hmm. you just gently mm -hmm. on the knee, on the shoulder, mm -hmm. on the head, you could calm down instantly. Yeah, like yeah. a baby, the mm -hmm. parents touch the baby and mm -hmm. <laughs> so happy. Yeah. Wow, that, that's awesome. And it's so, so funny that as you say that in that soothing voice, I can actually feel that. That's interesting. Just you talking about it in that way created something inside of me. That's beautiful because that's, we are touching people with all of our senses. Yeah, even our I, words. Yeah, I used to think that touch was the answer. Now mm -hmm. I see it as an aspect or a tool involved, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. all of your senses matter. Nice. So, so what is it about touch that maybe some of us don't really realize? All right, this is where I wanted to talk about what touch does for you. Okay. Dr. Tiffany Field studied... Uh, through the Touch Research Institute that she created in Miami, Florida, and mm -hmm. expanded it outward. She studied massage therapy. So she didn't study all these other types of body therapy, just simple massage therapy. And she found all kinds of benefits through research, either one 45-minute massage once a week or three 15-minute massages for five or six weeks, and mm -hmm. they found pain relief, pain management, better circulation, deeper breathing, mm -hmm. decreased anxiety, relaxation, more body awareness, body acceptance, uh, increased energy, increased flexibility, mood elevation, sensuality, all kinds of wonderful traits, sleeping better. Mm -hmm. So that's Dr. Mm -hmm. Tiffany Field. Mm -hmm. Then. Uh, Dr. John Money, he did a lot of research on gender identity issues, mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. handed me a book because he knew I was teaching about touch and working with touch. It was called Children of the Crash from, mm -hmm. I think it was the 1940s, okay. an a orphanage in Lebanon mm -hmm. where these children were studied, and they were retarded. If they stayed there for more than 18 months to three years, they became retarded because mm -hmm. they were lacking stimulation and touch. Mm -hmm. The people working there had been orphans, so mm -hmm. they didn't know how to touch and how to stimulate mm -hmm. either. But mm -hmm. if those children were adopted and they mm -hmm. received the touch from a family, a loving family, they gained back their intelligence. So it was just wow. intelligence that was mm -hmm. affected. And we mm -hmm. know that the brain is pliable. Mm -hmm. We've learned that, the plasticity of the brain. So the lack of touch is huge. And we know it's huge with an infant, but we don't always realize how powerful it is throughout life. So I wanted, before you say, I wanted to share a little bit more. Mm -hmm. That was amazing when I read this. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. So one of the things that touch does is it boosts immunity, mm -hmm. it decreases lymphocytes. Now I'm talking about gentle, loving, caring, respectful mm -hmm. touch. Mm -hmm. um, lowers the level of cytokines, the molecules that affect inflammation, decreases cortisol, and it decreases vasopressin, hormone that plays a role in aggression. Mm -hmm. And a study was done many years ago of different societies, and they discovered that societies where they do not touch, they don't allow a lot of touch, mm -hmm. and they have sexual taboos, both of those qualities, they mm -hmm. become more violent. The more peaceful societies accept touch and allow sexual expression. So that's huge in terms of immunity and what happens with touch but then there's these levels of brain waves that mm -hmm. that's the part that i was excited about to mm -hmm. learn love and to my, hear more about that <laughs> <laughs> so with touch it starts you go in and you receive a session where you're mm -hmm. being touched or mm -hmm. you're with a partner and you're being touched our natural state is beta waves where we're busy and we're active mm -hmm. and if we're in those beta waves we're not relaxed so the first step is that touch reduces and decreases the beta waves in the brain. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Then, as we continue to be touched, it decreases the frontal alpha waves. So the alpha state, that's the state we think of as we get relaxed. Okay. But then when you really, when you're receiving a session or when someone is touching you gently mm -hmm. in this very present, thoughtful way, it increases theta waves. And that's mm -hmm. when you get into your subconscious or your altered mm -hmm. state of mind. And if you continue to receive this gentle touch, mm -hmm. this is when you develop more of the frontal delta waves, like mm -hmm. almost like a deep sleep. It's like slow, loud brain waves that suspend your external awareness, gives you a gateway into the universal mind and the collective unconscious, and it's a source of empathy. So if you're listening to those delta waves, it sounds a lot like what happens with substance abuse. They get into mm -hmm. that altered state mm -hmm. and it feels good. Mm -hmm. Well, what many people don't realize is that you can feel good through touch. Mm -hmm. And there are no side effects except feeling more love in your life. Wow, Erica, that is so beautiful. And how do you, in your practice, incorporate touch? What is your unique way? Because I hear that you have studied so many different, you studied with different people, so many different modalities. What's your unique way in for your people? What I like to say is that the Rubenfeld Synergy Method, the mm -hmm. one where my mentor, Alana Rubenfeld, taught, that's been the framework for my work. Mm -hmm. I always approach it that way. It's very respectful, very light touch, like, like a feather touch. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. also craniosacral work and somato-emotional release is another mm -hmm. piece. And Dr. John Upledger that I worked with, he used to talk about touching lighter than a nickel. So if you put a nickel on your body, that's how uh -huh. light you need uh -huh. to touch someone. So uh -huh. it's that way. But I don't start with touch therapy. I always mm -hmm. start with individuals or a couple. They come in and I take a history and I, it's mm -hmm. a regular counseling session. Mm -hmm. I get the background no matter what they're coming for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, but then in the second or third session, uh, I will do a body therapy session if the person's receptive. Otherwise, mm -hmm. no. And it's very respectful. If they don't mm -hmm. want their head touched, I don't touch mm -hmm. their head. Some people don't want their feet touched. One person didn't like his stomach to be touched. And mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not like doing a lot on the stomach, but I might be holding mm -hmm. and helping the person. He didn't like that at all because mm -hmm. it came out during that session, not when we were sitting and talking, that when he was younger, a group of boys surrounded him and tickled his stomach and hit him in the stomach. They called it pink belly and they were oh. giggling and he was traumatized by that. Mm -hmm. So through the touch, he became aware of that. So you can mm -hmm. imagine how that affects sexuality that, Absolutely. you know, you can't be touched somewhere. And so what happens is a person lies on the massage table. Usually they just take mm -hmm. their shoes off mm -hmm. and I just start by first I'm, I'm observing what's happening, mm -hmm. but then I might hold their head and then I might lift the person's arm. So if mm -hmm. their arm stays up in the air, you know, mm -hmm. they're not relaxed. So oh, I'm, okay. it's, it's obvious because you're just not letting go. So, mm -hmm. so they get used to the difference between holding tension and letting go. And mm -hmm. I do that with the legs, the arms. Mm -hmm. And I also observe the breathing. And mm -hmm. so many people, it looks like they're hardly breathing. Yeah. It's like, you know, they're holding their breath. Mm -hmm. So as they start to breathe more, the muscles might be tight. So mm -hmm. like if someone has panic attacks, their muscles are already tight. Mm -hmm. And their natural way is like a military way of holding mm -hmm. themselves. So if they get a little extra anxiety, there's no room and they can't breathe. Mm -hmm. So the breath is very important. And then the piece that happens is they're talking. I mean, they've been talking to me. I know what the issues are. They know mm -hmm. what they are. And then I might ask, like, uh, what are you feeling in your body right now? And they might say, I have this pain somewhere. And we go into it. I use Gestalt therapy and other mm -hmm. methods, mm -hmm. you know, um, what does it feel like? It's like a ball. It's this it reminds me. What does it remind you of? And my mother mm -hmm. used to do this or that. And, and they get to some issues. They might start crying. One thing I found is women more easily cry in a session. Mm -hmm. Men don't 
usually get to that point so easily. But when they're in a group setting, mm -hmm. if a man opens up, sometimes they're sobbing because mm -hmm. it's the first time they've really let down mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting difference. So as the session ends, I usually would have the person come to some kind of statement about what they discovered. Mm -hmm. So they say it in different positions, like lying down, mm -hmm. uh, I can handle my life or mm -hmm. whatever the terms are that they say, mm -hmm. then they sit up mm -hmm. and say it to me and then stand up. So mm -hmm. you're saying it in different levels and you're owning your own statement. I'm not telling mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. That's a sample of what happens. But Nice. Well, what I'm hearing, I think, is that it's a process of discovery between you and your clients so that as you're going in and touching certain things that we hold those memories, if you will, or hold things in our body. And when you're through gentle touch, some exploring and, and you're paying attention to their breathing and things and something powerful gets released or noticed that then can take them into a deeper level of healing because you're not just talking with the brain and doing talk therapy. You're allowing the body to lead and show you what it, it potentially needs. And this is yeah, right? beautifully said. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't think I could say it so well. But the problem, I don't want to call it a problem. The, mm -hmm. issue, the issue that we've had with body mm -hmm. psychotherapy is it's very hard to do a statistical research experiment about feeling those emotions, mm -hmm. accessing the emotions. Mm -hmm. But I do have an example that I was just reminded of the other day that I was working in the back room in a chiropractor's office. And this lady had come in who looked, you know, really shy and like withdrawn. Mm -hmm. And when she left the session, she walked out, you know, super and feeling really good. So the person, and, and she had done this a few times. So the receptionist at the desk asked me, what are you doing with <laughs> And so that was something that I realized nice. could, could be studied in research. Nice. You know, the different look, the different breathing. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot mm -hmm. of work to do. I, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's some research, but not enough mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. body psychotherapy. Got and it. Got it. I also wanted to add something. don't know where to fit this in, but there are many different methods of touch therapy. And mm -hmm. what most of us know about is um, Reiki as an energy mm -hmm. therapy mm -hmm. and massage. Right maybe chiropractic, maybe mm -hmm. physical therapy. We don't know about so many modalities. So I would like to briefly, I know I'm talking a lot about this. but oh, you're, It's good. Yeah. It's good. Thank you. So one of the basic types is Swedish massage, where they do five different movements. You use oils, you get undressed. Mm -hmm. People are familiar with that. Effleurage, petrissage, friction, tapotment, and vibration. That's like the basic massage technique. Mm -hmm. And that has expanded to contemporary Western massage and body work. And that is aqua massage, where they use water, heat, ice, um, animal massage, infant massage, pregnancy, sports massage, medical massage, chair massage, on-site, deep tissue. All of these are just contemporary Western types of massage. Wow. That's, and there's so much more. Then there's a whole array of types of body therapy that dancers and sports athletes know about, mm -hmm. but many other people don't. And these are like Alexander Technique and Feldenkrais and craniosacral, trigger point therapy, uh, osteopathy, physiatry, applied kinesiology, neuromuscular, myofascial release, manual lymph drainage, visceral manipulation, zero point balancing, and many, many more. So I get so frustrated when people speak and just talk about one thing, massage or Reiki, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when there's so much more. Then there's a whole set of Asian body therapies, starting, originating maybe from China with acupuncture and mm -hmm. the Chinese medical theory, which is all mm -hmm. about the whole body and the qualities in the body. Mm -hmm. But there's acupressure or shiatsu, mm -hmm. working with the meridians of the body, qigong, tai, tai massage, ama, 
Anma Jin Shinjutsu, wow. and many more. And there's Russian massage and Korean massage, and oh probably gosh. every culture has a type of massage. Calatonia from Brazil. There are so many methods and so many ways to help heal the body, to help access that deep place. And then the energetic massages, mm -hmm. Reiki is one of them. Healing touch is another. Mm -hmm. Therapeutic touch, Dr. Dolores Krieger talked about this in the 1960s or 70s. She did research at New York University among nurses. And this polarity therapy, Marielle, chakra healing. So dealing mm -hmm. with the chakras rather than the meridians. Chakras mm -hmm. are in a different direction, and that comes from Ayurveda medicine. And then Barbara Brennan School, that's pretty popular. And Chi self-massage. Mm -hmm. So that's a whole other area. Then there's somatic and expressive arts. That has gotten more uh, information and more addressing more recently. Mm -hmm. So things like biofeedback and EMDR and somatic experiencing, hypnotherapy, yoga, martial arts, sports, dance, movement, exercise, art, um, breath work, somato-emotional release, primal therapy. These are somatic and expressive arts, but only one type of touch or body awareness um, entity. Oh my gosh, Erica, how do you know what you need and what you do? And there's EFT to tapping, which is now so right, popular and it's really that. about touch. Right. And and because it's using acupuncture points yes, and touching yes. and mm -hmm. using the emotions. Right, and right. That, and then there's the whole area that I didn't get to yet of body psychotherapy. Okay. That's do you want to good. talk a little bit about that? Yeah, just very briefly. I okay, just want right. to give a little idea. The Rubenfeld Synergy method was just mm -hmm. one type of this one approach to it mm -hmm. there's bioenergetic analysis dr alexander lowen started that and his son is on i had a whole summit the love me touch me heal me summit where i interviewed leading practitioners wow. from so many different modalities mm -hmm. so if people are interested they can go to love me touch me heal me dot net at this mm -hmm. point it's not free there's a price for but they can get it now though they can but, go get it but they nice. can get it. Okay. Amazing people. And I, I've been doing this. I'll just mention a few more. Um, okay. Hakomi, organismic psychology, organismic psychotherapy, radix, peso boyden, psychomotor, Reikian therapy, Rosen method, somatic psychotherapy, biosynthesis, and core energetics. Mm -hmm. You may or may not have heard of any of those, but they're available and they're around the country, actually mm -hmm. around the world. There's a mm -hmm. European Association for Body Psychotherapy. So it exists all over, but wow. people, for whatever reason, don't know about it. And I did notice something. I'm a diplomat for the, which was originally the American Association of Pain Management, and I think it became American In International Association mm -hmm. of Pain Management. But I just read their journal recently and I saw that there was a statement from the CDC um, that controls what goes out, um, a statement about uh, alternative therapies. And this whole statement was removed from the document when it finally went out. So Why were, was that? Because I want to say something that probably pharmaceutical companies don't want people to know mm -hmm. that all these touch therapies work and help mm -hmm. to heal. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that the people doing touch therapy and body psychotherapy do not have the funds to do the kind of research that's needed. Mm -hmm. So it's like a catch-22. And mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure to let people know how much is available out there for healing. Nice. Well, it sounds like the love me, touch me, heal me dot net. Did I say that right? Yes. It sounds like if someone really has an interest in that, because you, this was jam packed full of information, that that would be a place for them to go and potentially find out more from particular healing practitioners. And what it also feels like too, is there's kind of a, maybe I'm idealistic here, but a coming together of kind of what I would call more Eastern philosophies and Western medicine too. And it feels like we are coming 
more, we are becoming more open to other methods and realizing that it's just not just about taking a pill and that there are other ways that we can heal. And so one of the things that I am curious, Erica, that I believe you're asking, the, you've asked the other people that you've interviewed is to you, what is recovery? That, yeah, that's a great question. And to me, recovery is recovering your authentic self, mm -hmm. like really tapping back into who you are and being able to be present with other people, present mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. So just yesterday, I interviewed the most amazing person, Michelle Pascal, mm -hmm. on my uh, blog talk radio show and I, I may be adding his audio to this summit because mm -hmm. it was so powerful what he had to say that the way that we know uh, meditation in this society is that you go into a room, you sit in a lotus position or you just sit quietly for a half hour or an hour and you meditate, you calm down and it has all these wonderful benefits but then you go back out into your stressful life and you know, you forget the meditation and you're angry when you're driving and mm -hmm. all of that. And what he pointed out that I absolutely love is that meditation is in the moment. It's being mm -hmm. present in every moment. So he said that in your office, that can become your meditation place. Mm -hmm. And in nice. your car can be your meditation place. Mm -hmm. So someone cuts you off and you use an image, like he used an image of be like a mountain. Mm -hmm. And you're just still, and he's worked with prisoners and with mm -hmm. um, addicts and all kinds of people, and mm -hmm. they're finding amazing results. He works mm -hmm. out of California. Mm -hmm. So recovery is really recovering your ability to be present to your life. Oh, that is beautiful. I love that. I love that. And it really is about the wisdom of recovering what's within as opposed to learning. We think we have to go out and learn, but it's really about, feels like it's removing all of the stuff that we took on that we don't really need to get to the wisdom that exists like inside our gut, our heart, our brain, the combination. We so sometimes, that. thank you. Sometimes you have to reach out and study right, right. out there and get other mm -hmm. people's wisdom to help you find your own mm -hmm. wisdom. But it's Beautiful. not about doing what someone else tells you to do mm -hmm. because it has to come from within. You have to trust your gut, but you have to nurture your gut mm -hmm. so it works together. Right, that gut with all those receptors in there. Yeah. And I left out a little piece. Okay. That, that piece is the heart. Yeah. And the yeah. heart, <laughs> the Heart Math Institute has studied oh, the energy of the heart. That's great. They're great. And they say it's 5,000 times stronger Mm -hmm. attraction mm -hmm. from the heart than from the brain. Mm -hmm. So when we what? balance all three. And you know what's really exciting? I love, love the webinars that you do because it really takes us, when I hear this and I hear people talking and I hear you talk, it causes me to be hungry for more and, and to and to I feel like I want to go get a massage right now. Don't know what kind to choose, but you know. <laughs> We, as we learn, and then as you said too, we come into that place inside of us where we see what resonates with us and, and what helps us be more fully self-expressed and embrace our own innocence, passion, sexuality, healing. And I think that's what it's about. And I think when I think about addictions, I think that sometimes we are searching for that because we get a temporary high from a substance, be it a drink, be it a person, be it a pill. And when we, when we find out that there are other ways to get that part of it that we so need nurturing, we, we can get it from other ways. That is so beautiful. So thank you so much for what you have done. Anything else that you would like to add that maybe is, is a little tidbit that maybe we missed? I know we covered a lot. Anything that's really, really <laughs> no, I, important? I think I covered everything. <laughs> but my favorite statement uh -huh. is that where there is love, there is a way. Oh. But to get to that love, you mm -hmm. sometimes have to, you know, release a lot because it's been so suppressed. Mm -hmm. And the love has to begin with yourself. Mm -hmm. So, and loving yourself, as Dr. Daniel Amen says, mm -hmm. um, when you want to go eat something, do you love the food or does that food love you? Mm -hmm. 
And now I'm starting to feel when I eat something, I ask that question. I might, mm -hmm. go, eat, I might go eat the thing I love, but mm -hmm. I'm paying attention to how do I feel later on. And mm -hmm. next time I might not reach out for that food because it didn't mm -hmm. feel so good. So mm -hmm. where there is love, there is a way. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, this has been marvelous. I so loved hearing your wisdom and hearing everything you have to offer. You have a lot of knowledge and information in that brain and in that heart, and I'm sure in that gut. Um, <laughs> how about any books or courses that you have going on right now other than the Love Me, Touch Me, Heal Me .net, or, and is there a way that our viewers can get in touch with you and learn more about you and what you do? Well, my, my main website is drericagoodstone.com. Mm -hmm. I also have a Blog Talk Radio site, and it's at Blog Talk radio.com slash Dr. Erica G, but mm -hmm. it's called the Healthy Baby Boomers Network and yes. Blog Talk Radio Show. And I've been interviewing some amazing, amazing people mm -hmm. like, like this meditation expert mm -hmm. who, who lived in the Himalayas and really studied with leading meditation teachers. And also I have a very special course that I only offer a few times a year called 30 Love Lessons for the Soul. It's a 30-day love challenge mm -hmm. that was 30 days, and I'm going to expand it to a longer period of time so people can absorb all that's possible nice. in that course. Nice. It sounds wonderful. And I think it's about allowing ourselves to experience and be touched, whether it's physically or emotionally, and really open our hearts, like you said, to be the best authentic me, you, people out there we can be. This has been so delightful. I thank you so much for allowing me. It's my privilege and honor to interview you. And I love what you're creating in the world in so many different ways and that you're going out and contacting people and putting it all together in a compact program that people can get so many tidbits from so many different people. There's so much out there. Beautiful job. Thank you again for allowing me to interview you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being willing to do this. So gracious and willing. And I just want to add one thing that the reason that I created these summits is mm -hmm. that I have known so many people doing such incredible work in the world mm -hmm. and they may not be out there on the internet in a mm -hmm. way that enough people can find their messages. 